Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our service this morning. As you look around, you'll see some different faces at the front of the church and around the church as we, uh, the members of the United Methodist Women Organization, celebrate 148 years of service to our local churches and in missions and uh, across the world. So today we are very honored and delighted to have the opportunity to lead the services here at our church. You will notice that many of us are wearing uh, purple bows. If you are a member of United Methodist Women and you do not yet have a purple bow, please raise your hand and one of these ladies in the back will, will bring you a bow. I wanted to also share with you that in the parlor, after our worship service has concluded, Cecilia Ashley and some other ladies will be there to share more information about United Methodist Women and to talk with you if you're possibly interested in joining our group. We also have the opportunity for missions here locally by participating in the Coastal Pregnancy Center's uh, baby bottle a collection and those are out in the foyer area where we do this once a year we do this annually in january to help support that local ministry you'll find these in your pews and these are a wonderful a gift to us by the agape circle if you're really super busy and you don't have time to purchase and mail valentines they will do this for you and all the proceeds they collect will go to the missions that they support. So we're really glad to be able to be a part of that for them. If there are no other announcements, let us now prepare our hearts for worship. together for the call to worship and the opening prayer. For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness who has shown in our hearts. To give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God 
in the face of Jesus Christ. Everlasting God, you gave us the faith of Christ for a light to our feet amid the darkness of the world. Have pity on all who, a doubting or denying it, are gone astray from the path of safety. Bring home the truth to their hearts and grant them to receive it. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our opening hymn is, is number 103, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wants. Creed is found on page 881. Let's read together, please. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And so at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life. standing this is that very special time in the service when we extend each other the peace of Christ so greet your neighbors this morning
seated. I want to first thank you all for coming. We, are, we feel blessed to have you here. In my role as the president of the United Methodist Women, uh, I've been asked to just share some things about us and what makes us the United Methodist Women, a little bit about our history. Before I do, I want to give, a, uh, they say at different events, a special shout out uh, to a couple of people that, without whom I'm not sure we could pull this off. And I know we're not at the finish line, but before we get there, uh, Jane Griffin and Lee Stanley, just stand and, and let us all say a great big thank you to both of them. Uh, I thank God for voices and musicians and all of those things that, uh, that I certainly don't have. And without these two ladies, I'm not sure what would have happened about the music, but you are assured with their presence that I won't be singing. So that's a good one. Uh, this is either our first ever or our first in a long, long time Women's Sunday. Uh, I hope and pray it's not the first and the last. Uh, so we made it through the first service. And, uh, but in your bulletin, we have uh, several things about us that I want to point out a little bit. Today, though, what we're trying to do is share who we are and a little bit about what we're about. We also wanted to make this a gift to those who spend so much time and effort, Susan and, and Pastor Ken and others, that put so much into building this service. I had no idea how much went into this and how much detail was involved until we started down this journey. And this is a uh, something that doesn't just happen on Sunday morning, and I think I have a new appreciation for what all you do. So part of, our, part of this was meant to be a gift to you, to give you Sunday where you didn't have to be up here doing this, and you could get the comic relief that we might provide. So. <laughs> we are a community of, of women who have really three main purposes. One of those is to know God and experience freedom as whole persons through Jesus Christ. The second is to develop creative, supportive fellowships. And the third is to expand the concepts of mission through participation in global ministries. We have a global society, and we have in our church, we're a connectional congregation. We're connected to people all over the world, and the United Methodist Women is also. So a lot of the things that we do this morning, our color for this year is purple. You have a purple, uh, not an insert in the bulletin, but a handout uh, with your bulletin that's purple. We're wearing purple ribbons. Some of our members wore purple clothing today because our color for this year goes with our theme, and it is, uh, it is, it is our color for the year. And so women, United Methodist women worldwide might have on purple today and throughout this year, 2017. On the purple sheet in, uh, that you were given, on one side is our history, and on the other side is some stuff just about us here at First United Methodist in Washington. As far as our history, as, as Lori said, we're 148 years old. Uh, 1869, some ladies got together, and I made note in the first service that, that in our history it says that their husbands allowed them to go. <laughs> this is not a thing we have carried out throughout the rest of the year. So their husbands allowed them to go to a meeting and to learn about and to share about India and some things that were going on in India. More importantly, some things that weren't going on. There was no school for girls in India. There was no hospital in India in 1869. And this little group of women, eight women, and a couple of ladies that knew about India got together. And from there, they were able to grow and, and build within just a couple of years, really, to build a school for girls that became a college for women in India and a hospital, and both of those things are still open today in India. And we're carrying, so, so we're carrying along with missions all throughout the year. If you read through our history, and I would hope that you would, that you would look at all the things that have been accomplished. And what it tells me is when a few people get together, they can change the world. We can change our community, our church, our group that we're with, and we can ultimately change the world. We are strong and proud of our rich history, and I don't know that we celebrate it quite enough. So another purpose of today is to celebrate that history as we get ready to prepare for a 150-year big celebration around the world. We also, every four years, we adopt a new theme. I have trouble saying the word, but it's a quadrennial theme, meaning I'll just say four years. How about that? <laughs> so this year, our theme is summons. 
that we are summoned. We are summoned. This, this particular 2017, our color is purple. Our theme is summons. And the, and the idea, the focus is to follow. We are summoned to follow Jesus Christ and to go where our heart leads us. That means that we reach out to people that we follow and we do the kinds of things and we learn to treat one another like Jesus would have asked us to do and like we are called to do. Next year it's to go. To go where Jesus leads us. To lead, go where our heart leads us. In 2019, our, our mission, our focus is to serve. To serve uh, the needy, to serve the weak, the hungry, the thirsty, and the sick to serve. And in the last year of this four-year period, it is to love. To love the poor, to love immigrants, to love prisoners, to love the homeless, to love the lonely and the lost. And so we have to try to keep those as our focus as we move through these next four years and we walk with, with God. On the other side of the sheet, you'll see that some, a little bit about uh, our United Methodist group here, we are 150 women strong. At our general meetings that we have once a quarter, we usually have a little over 100 people that come regularly. So it's, it's not just 150 people on the rolls. We have 150 people working and doing things. If you look there in the middle of the sheet, this is what you call a word cloud. And I took all the things that Shirley uh, Stone told me that uh, from her years as president, uh, over the last two or three years, really, all the things that the United Methodist women have done. And you, you make the list, and then you, you do a few things, and it throws, the computer throws it out, all these words out there in a cloud. So if you got your magnifying glass, you could look and you could see everything that we do uh, and all the things that we have done over the last uh, year. We also spent over $10,000 supporting local agencies in Haiti, and other work around the world. So that was just in our circles. You can see our, our leadership and the planning committee. If you get a chance to, to say thank you to the planning committee, that would be, that would be wonderful, wonderful. We, um, I, I like to, actually I said at a recent meeting that the women in the last year or two have left the kitchen. The women have left the kitchen, similar to our project that we had through the missions committee about the, the church has left the building. The women have left the kitchen. We had begun to be typecast, and we also began to spend most of our time cooking and baking, making casseroles and taking this and that and the other everywhere. And, and, and folks were telling me, look, we're tired of this. We want to do something different. So what we've been trying to do is to do less of that and more getting out of our seats, getting out of our comfort zones, and going out and trying to be more missional, more purposeful, and to do things around the community. That's a work in progress, but that's something that we're working on. Some of the things that we do, some of you are teachers, and I, I know you know about this program, the Backpack Pass, but you know, most of us sit here and we think, well, kids get, get free lunches and they get breakfast, so they get two hot meals a day, and that's wonderful. But what about the weekends? And so in an effort to continue our work with Hand in Hand in John Cotton Taylor's school, every month women in the Circle of Faith pack backpack, backpacks to give to the children through the guidance counselor at John Cotton Taylor to take home with them on the weekend because some people, some families don't have the money to provide that food through the weekend. And unfortunately... Some parents don't have what is necessary to know that their children need that that weekend. So between poverty and poor parenting, sometimes kids get le left out. So everything in that backpack, that child can go home and fix themselves. So we try to make sure of that. And that's one of the projects that we do. Another thing that we do, uh, you got this morning um, in the pews, is this red thing about the Valentine's card. Well, you say, well, that's pretty good. You know, $2 and somebody will send my cards for me. And you could send it to family or friends, anybody that you wanted to. But you also could think about, wouldn't this be a great thing to pay the $2 and, and to send it to some of our sick and shut-in people here in our church? And so we would hope that you would avail yourself of that opportunity. The money spent on them would go for other projects that the circle is doing. But this could be a direct thing that would brighten someone's day. When you're sick and shut in, getting a card is a wonderful thing. A wonderful thing. Another thing that we do that goes with the baby bottles. You might just see a baby bottle out there. When I was, came into church last Sunday and I saw one up here, 
uh, uh, next to Ken Hall. I thought, hmm, that looks a little strange. And then I looked closer and I realized what it was. But the baby bottles. It's just a baby bottle. But you fill it up with coins or with dollar bills or with checks. And guess what it becomes? It becomes prenatal care for a woman that didn't get it or wouldn't get it. It provides someone to counsel with her about how to take care of the baby, the kind of care that she needs, make sure she gets her vitamins, etc. Helps get an ultrasound or any number of things that are needed and then helps to mentor that young mother in the first year of that child's life and many, many more things. So to us, it's a baby bottle and a bunch of coins. To them, it's something really, really meaningful that could be the difference between life and death. Another thing that we do that's near and dear to my heart always is Ruth's house. Uh, I was very privileged to be one of the founders and will soon be finishing my work because I, I can't serve any more terms. But, but the reason I got involved in it uh, is the, and the same reason that many of you got involved in it. We have people in our church that work at the shelter and help manage the shelter and mentor the ladies. We have people in our church that help to underwrite some of the expenses. We have people that work at the, uh, at the store downtown. And we have others that do various and other projects like make baby blankets or make blankets that every mother that leaves, the, every, every family, every person that leaves that house goes home to their new home with a blanket that says, I love you, from a Methodist church. Did you know that? That's stuff that the women of this church do and they do it very well. The biggest thing about Ruth's house is that we made it possible for people to stay in their own community if they were living in domestic violence and they wanted to flee. Before, what would happen is they had to get in a police car, go to the Pitt County line, get in the police car there, and go to the Pitt County shelter. By having a shelter here, we stopped all that trauma for children. And you were a big part of that effort in this community. And so were the United Methodist women. So we're very proud of the projects that we've done. We are works-oriented. You can tell that by the word cloud. We uh, focus on uh, individual spiritual growth. You know, we're all on a faith journey of some kind, and we've been so busy doing things that we haven't taken the time that we needed to take to, to really look inward and, and to be on a spiritual journey. So we're working on some of that. We're working on fellowship. We've been so busy doing, we haven't laughed and had fun as I shared with them many times, that if you suppress laughter, it's a very bad thing to do. You want to laugh as often as you can because if you suppress laughter, it gets into your system. It starts dropping down and it spreads at the hips. <laughs> <laughs> Took you a minute on that one. <laughs> the last thing we do is that we honor tradition. It's hard to honor tradition and also try to change and look forward to the 21st century, look for sustainability, new leaders, new ideas, try to get us computerized and on social media. It's hard to honor tradition and keep moving forward, but that's what we're doing. And it's not, it's not always easy. It's not always a fun journey, but it's a journey that we're all on together, 150 strong of us. The organization's been here for 150 years. Lori's been here most of those years. Um, <laughs> no. All joking aside, we have someone in our congregation that we just learned yesterday joined the United Methodist Women when she was in high school. Now, I'm not going to tell her age today. Somebody did in church recently. But I, but I would ask, Miss Alligad, Miss B. Alligad, would you stand up for just a moment? Uh, that, that Miss Allie Good has been a member of the United Methodist Church of this, I mean Methodist women, in this church for 77 years. Again, we're blessed by your presence this morning, and we'll move now to the rest of the, uh, of the service. Thank you. have a moment with the children. If the children would come on down. You got it? <laughs> Some of the others of you that are feeling like children today, you can come on too if you want to. Come on down. Anybody, all ages. They're all God's children. That's right. All ages. Yeah. Look at your age. Have a seat. Now we're going to do something today that you've probably never done before in church. And that's, we're going to have a little um, 
workout, okay? A little exercise. So I'm going to give you something to see if we can build strong muscles. Okay. 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 Let's, I want to be here. All right. Now, let's see if we can, let's see if we can get some strong muscles with this. <laughs> no, 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 you're right. I think we have to add something. But this is not enough. This is just too light. We're not going to get strong this way, are we? Oh, oh, I have something really wonderful here. I have some feathers. Let's, yeah, that, that's not going to work either. We'll try it, see. Wow. <laughs> They're not going for it. Okay, I've got to bring out the big ones now here. Let's see. Oh, I only had one of these. Ooh. How about this? You want to just try that? No. Try that? I can do it. All right. Do you think that would build strong muscles? Yes. Well, God wants us to be strong Christians and strong followers. Now, when we have beautiful days and wonderful days and everything is so wonderful and easy for us, that's like the cotton and the feathers. And that's the blessings that God gives us. But when we have difficult days and we have trouble and problems, that's when we have to go to God and we have to ask Him to help us. Because God will help us through any problems we have. And sometimes he'll send somebody else to help us as well. So we can always count on God to come. And each time we have a problem and we call on God in prayer, we become stronger Christians. Okay? So I want you to remember that. You're never alone. You'll always ask God to help you. Okay? Let's bow our heads and say a little prayer. Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Thank you for your son, Jesus. Thank you for your son, Jesus. And thank you for all the blessings you give to us. And thank you for all the blessings you give to us. Help us to grow stronger. Help us to grow stronger. In Christian faith. In Christian faith. And in Christian love. And in Christian love. Because God is our strong leader. Because God is our strong leader. And he is the light to show us the way. We come now to our prayer time. What are our praises this morning and our prayer concerns? Sherry's aunt, Lois Dixon. Who else? It's so good to see you all here. What else do you have? All right, well, let's um, turn our hearts to the Lord with this verse from the scripture. O oh God, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love, so that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Now let us pray. Almighty and loving God, we celebrate the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, to us and for us, and the work of your Holy Spirit in our lives. We celebrate, particularly today, the United Methodist women who are making this service possible. We receive the gifts of healing and of provision for those that we have lifted before you and those we lift in our hearts. We give thanks 
for this day. Now, let us join in praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
we just thank you for the bounty of these blessings and the hearts that have given this morning. We ask that this offering will be pleasing to you and that we'll do a good work in our church. Amen. Amen. And if you'll turn in your hymnals, we're at hymn 557, Bless Be the Tide That Binds.
please join with me as I read from the New Oxford Bible, the scripture today, which is Psalm 27, verses 1 and 4 through 7. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? One thing I ask of the Lord that I will seek after, to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter all the days of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious unto me and answer me. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. Good morning. So glad to see you. And I'm sure as you're looking in your bulletin and you see that the title is Esther at the Spa. Who knew? And if you'll turn in your Bibles and if you can find the book of Esther. You're doing good. It is after Ezra and Nehemiah. And it that you can ever imagine. And that's in the very first chapter of Esther. Is this working? No. no. Not sure why. Hello? Okay. Yes? No. Help, help. Am I okay? No? Yes? Is this on? Yeah, sorry. I may have gone dead. My battery may be dead. It's very possible. Very possible. Anyway, so we're in this palace, and we're out in the garden, 
And they all, uh, one of the parts of the story says that they had unlimited amount of wine. So for seven days, they could drink as much as they wanted. And, uh, and there were no women there. So I'm sure they had a really good time. The king asked his queen, who was Queen Vashti, was her name, and he asked her to come and join them. He thought she was really hot, and he just really wanted to share her with these people. He wanted her to wear her crown. Um, she refused to come, and uh, in lieu of that, she was ousted from the palace. She could no longer be there. And uh, he even sent an edict out to all of the men in Persia and said, the women should obey you. The women better obey you. So then, enter Esther into the picture. Now, Esther apparently was very beautiful already. And uh, she lived with her guardian and cousin, Mordecai. Now, Mordecai, you have to realize, is a descendant of Saul. And he was part of the Sanhedrin. So he was a very um, prominent Jew in the community which also has a bearing on the story because that means that Esther was Jewish. So just kind of tuck that in the back of your mind. As the story goes on, Esther is part of a beauty pageant at the palace. Kind of like Miss America. Mm -hmm. And she goes to the palace and she has a wonderful 12-month extended visit at the spa. Esther at the spa. 12 months of getting beautiful. I want to know where this spa is. <laughs> I'm going to sign up. <laughs> I think it would be fun. So about six months are spent with many perfumes and getting beautiful. Six more months in oils and creams and all this before she's presented to King Xerxes. And she must have looked really good because he chose her as his queen. Now remember God is working incognito at this time to bring Esther into the palace to make sure that all of this happens. So King Xerxes is very pleased with Esther. And in the meantime, Mordecai is keeping an eye on her because he does not want to have anything happen to his cousin. So he parks himself out at the gate, the entrance to the palace, to kind of keep an eye on her. And he's in constant communication probably with those seven maids, by the way, did I mention that? She had seven maids that took care of her. Um, and so um, during all this time, we now, in any good story, you also have to have a villain. So enter into the picture Haman. So we're all going to say, boo Haman. Now, let me hear you. Boo Haman. So Haman is not happy that Mordecai is sitting out there in front of the palace because every time Haman goes by him, he's waiting for Mordecai to bow to him because Haman has a quite a reputation in the palace. Haman will not bow to him. He refuses. And uh, Mordecai will not bow to Haman, and he refuses, and it really makes him mad. So Haman gets King Xerxes, who, by the way, um, might be a little bit spineless. Uh, King Xerxes doesn't really want to um, put forth much effort to command people to do things. 
He uh, kind of relies on others to do it for him. So he does send out an edict that all of the Jews will be killed because Haman figures, I'm going to just get rid of all of them because Mordecai is a Jew. So I'm just going to get rid of them all. In the meantime, Mordecai, and if you want to look at chapter 4, this is in verses 13 and 14. So Mordecai gets this message to Esther. Do not think to yourself that in the king's palace you will escape any more than all the other Jews. For if you keep silent at this time, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not come to the kingdom for such a time as this. So Esther is asked to make a request of the king that the Jews not be killed. And this is very risky for her. And she agrees to do it. She is very obedient to what Mordecai has asked her to do. And uh, actually, she uh, has to go before the king, and he has to extend his gold scepter to her. And if he doesn't do that, she will be killed. And she has even said, if I perish, I perish. But she continues to be obedient. So what is it that is a calling for you that you are being asked to do? What has the Lord laid on your heart that he wants you to do at a time such as this? Is it to be in a Bible study? In fact, the book of Esther is going to be a Bible study this year. Are you being asked to go to Sunday school? Are you being asked to be part of Matthew 25 or help with Ruth's house? Maybe Christian carpenters. What is something that the Lord is laying on your heart that you are to do at such a time as this? And are you going to be obedient to what the Lord is saying to you? I want to tell you that this story has a very happy ending. And uh, Esther is very bold. And I'm just thinking she might have been part of the bold and the beautiful. Not sure about that, but maybe. Probably not the young and the restless, but maybe the bold and the beautiful. Because she definitely was very bold, because that took um, a tremendous, tremendous amount of obedience for her to have gone before the king, risking her own life to be obedient. And you will have to read the end of the story, though, yourself, to find out what happens to Haman. It is really good. It's so good. And this book of the Bible is full of drama. I love it that we have the heroine, and we have the, the villain, and we have the king, and we have the queen. It's just a great story. And it's even in the Old Testament. Who knew? So go back and read that and find out what happens to Haman. And whatever the Lord is laying on your heart, know that, that not only was Esther obedient, but if you will look in Philippians 2, 8, and that verse says, And being found in appearance as a man, Jesus Christ humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. And if you do not know Jesus as your personal Savior, I just ask you today, right where you're sitting, if you would ask him to come into your heart, believe that he is who he says he is, love him, know him as Lord of Lords and King of Kings, and that uh, I sin, 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 but he saves, saves, saves. So I ask that you will bring him into your heart. 
And so as we close this, let's remember the obedience of Esther and go back and read the rest of the story and enjoy those words of the Old Testament. And now if you'll stand, we are going to turn to page 206 in our hymnal, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light. say that I failed to mention our huge, huge ministry with cancer survivors in this town. We have a, a whole circle that sews and does all sorts of wonderful things and I failed to bring them to light but that's a wonderful ministry. You are part of our ministry and our life and our sisterhood and again we thank you for being here this morning. Now as we depart, I'd like to ask that the, uh, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and ask you to join us in singing the first verse of hymn 672. Um, yeah, 672. Thank you. Thank you.